Hi, my name is Bill Black. I'm from Spirit River and I'm here to teach you how to tie a woolly bugger. This is a basic streamer. Catches fish all over the world. Probably one of the most popular flies there is. There's a few tricks to it I'd like to show you, but more importantly, you could buy this kit from any of our dealers. Uh, and it's got all the ingredients to tie a woolly bugger, including instructions and hooks. The only thing it lacks is a thread. Um, and I'd like to show you how to tie this and ask you that you purchase our products whenever you can. Uh, so basically this is a woolly bugger. Your tail is about the same length as your um, shank of your hook. We want a nice even body with no bumps in it from the chenille. And this hackle that sticks out we want it about one and a half times the gap. Alright, so let's get started. Um, this is a weighted fly, meaning it sinks. So. I'm going to grab a little bit of lead wire. I'm going to take 10 or 12 wraps. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 wraps, say. On this, this is a big size. This is size 6. Okay, next I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thread, go over the top, and my objective here is to trap that lead wire. Okay and make sure it doesn't slip and move around on me. Now to double ensure that it's not, I'm going to take a little drop of super glue, get my thread out of the way because if you don't want to drop falling on your, your thread or your bobbin. Okay, I'm going to go back over this now and just cover it with a little bit more thread. This will make it help make the fly really bulletproof, keep the body from twisting on it. Okay, so that's it for the underbody. Next, we're going to take a piece of marabou. So you can take a piece of strung marabou and find a nice piece like this. And what I like to do is I like to clip it rather than pull it so that all that marabou stays together. Okay, Clean it up a little bit. Now I'm going to try to get most of the tips to match. Now remember this has got fresh super glue on it so I'm not really going to touch it on the hook shake. But I want this tail that's going to undulate to be about the length of the shank. Okay, well I also want it to go up to about here where the lead wire is at. So I know if I tie it in right there, I'm going to need to leave a little bit, about maybe a quarter inch, oops, up between my fingers and down, and then I kind of trap it with my finger there. There you go. So now you've got about the length of the shank, there's your tail, and it's relatively even. Next I'm going to take a piece of copper or gold wire and I'm going to lay that on the hook. I'm going to tie that in. And I'm, The trick here is to grab that end tab and pull it back and then wrap back over it. That locks it in. There's nothing worse than tying this fly and you start pulling on this ribbing and it pops loose. That's a real pain. Okay, I'm going to cover that again with thread. I'm going to come up here in the front. This is where I'm going to take a nice piece of chenille. It's important to strip your chenille so the core shows. Tie that in. Actually, rather than wrapping it around, I'm going to go back like this. Also, if you want to add a little bit of flash before you put the chenille in, that's the time to add flash to your tail. I might add that I like to put a little bit of the Spectrum Mylar Motion or Holographic Flash. It just adds a little liveliness to the fly. A lot of anglers don't like it because it's too flashy. Oh well. So now I'm going to start wrapping this pretty tight. I don't want this moving around on me. Now see how I've arranged all those materials under to give me a pretty nice, even chenille body. Got to catch that around here a couple times. I'm going to clip that. A lot of times on the heavier materials I use the bottom of my scissors rather than the tips. I save the tips for fine work. Again, I pull off a little bit of that rayon chenille portion, uh, <clears throat> which helps keep that head small and narrow. Next, I've gone through and measured out some saddle hackle. You can always lay your hackle on your fly and turn it and see where it stands. You want about 
one and a half to two times the hook gauge. These particular saddles aren't really very long, and so I stretch it for all I can. I, I strip a little bit off, and I got actually I use a little bit of fluff here in the base. I go ahead and lay that across, and I tie that in. I'll push that little quill back, and I'll take a couple more wraps to lock it in. Now I start working this evenly back. And then, I trap it with this wire that I've left hanging off the back. And I go back around, nice and even. There you go. Now, a fish's teeth will not be able to whack that hackle. Again, I fold that wire back and lock it in. And again, I use the base of my scissors. I go in and clip that little hackle tip. Okay, now it's just a matter of making a nice head and putting a drop of super glue on it. Okay, there's two ways to do that. You can you can do that and just put a drop of glue right there. Or another nice way to do it now is just run some super glue up and down your thread and go around. That puts the glue all the way around. It's real nice. And you don't need to do too many wraps when you do that. So in essence, you've got a woolly bugger. You can have any color tail, any color body, any color hackle. Black is a very popular one, and brown is a very popular one. Mostly in sizes 6, 8, and 10s. Again, the tail equals the length of the shank. Your body is nice and even, and your hackle should be about one and a half to two times the gait. And you want a nice, conical, bullet-shaped head with a little bit of glue to keep it from unraveling. And that is a Spirit River woolly bugger. Thank you.